Well, Lydia, it's a, a journey in cricket that's taking you through playing to, to coaching and, and business and the media as well. But, but where did the love of cricket first come from for you? Um, I think, well, for me, definitely it was through my family. So um, a lot of the girls sort of my age now had a similar sort of route. My dad played cricket and I would go up to the local cricket club and watch him play um, and sort of try and copy what he was doing, go in the nets um, and learn that way. And so for me, growing up at my local cricket club was a massive part of me as a cricketer and as a person as well. I learned a lot from the people there and then went on to play sort of county age group stuff. But yeah, I mean, for me, it's all, all about the local cricket club down at Hayes in Kent, which is where I learnt the game. Well, there have been many women and girls around there as well when you were down there picking up hints and tips. Well, no. So back then I was the only girl playing. Um, so I was the only girl played in all the boys teams um, from sort of under 11s right up to under 16s. Um, and that's something that actually really helped me develop as a player. You're, you're facing quicker bowlers, the ball's being hit harder at you. Um, so actually it was a really good sort of training arena for me. Um, and it wasn't until I was a bit older that I started to play women's cricket. Um, there were a few more girls and women playing and, and so and that that was nice as well to be able to play with my own peers um, sort of balance that that between playing some really tough cricket with the boys as well. Were there any role models in women's cricket for you growing up? I think I saw you talk about Charlotte Edwards maybe as someone who you looked up to. Yeah, I mean, she was the one who, obviously I didn't have access to female cricketers on the TV, the, you know, radio, that they, they weren't being covered at the time. But because I played cricket for Kent and um, Charlotte Edwards was the captain, I had sort of real a close-up view, really, if you like, of someone who... I just thought was absolutely amazing you know she everything that she did from playing to off the pitch how she prepared um was brilliant for me to just watch and and take it all in so um yeah obviously learned a a huge amount from her but it's so important for for young girls to have role models growing up what was that journey like into into the Kent side if you say that you went you were playing against boys and, and men for a while how do you progress into the women set up at that time yeah I mean that was interesting because I was my main cricket was was boys cricket but I was also playing age group county cricket from under 11 with the girls Um, and then when I was 14 I got invited to a Kent women's senior trial and um, I I enjoyed it I felt like I was good enough to fit in Um, and that was largely because of the sort of games and and match practice I'd had with the boys cricket I'd been playing so I very much felt like I I could hold my own there um and but then it's just a a different dynamic there I was a, a real youngster and there was a lot of really talented older females um again who I could learn from um and I think that's one of the beauties of cricket is there's so many different age ranges of people playing that you can learn from from different um you know different parts of the game um so that was I, I really enjoyed that as well from there it was it was an England career a 13 year England career uh, how in that time did you notice women's sport change Oh, massively. It's, I look back now and I just think it's so different to what it is um, these days. So when I started, I, I was 17 when I got picked for England and um, flew out to Australia um, to meet up with the team. And, you know, no one knew that we were playing. It was the Ashes. Um, we were playing at the Gabba and there were just friends and family. And everyone knows what the Gabba's like. There's all those coloured seating. And, and that's exactly what we saw because there was no no one sitting in the stadium or, or anything like that. It wasn't covered in the news and it wasn't covered here back home. Um, and then you fast forward to where it is now and, you know, it's professional, the, the support staff that you have. Um, people talk about the men's, you know, the amount of players is matched by the amount of support staff. And that's similar with the women. You have everything that you need. Um, and obviously the interest now, I think, it has filtered down to um, young girls and boys now wanting to watch the women's team play. Um, and so from that point of view, it, it's been brilliant to see. Um, but I certainly am, am pleased that I've experienced all the different eras um, 
from being complete amateurs to, to professional cricket as well. As a player, how does that help? How does that more professionalisation or, or even the, the high profile help you when you're out there? Yeah, I think just time on task, really. I think when I was um, breaking into the England team, I was working full time. Um, so I would only be able to maybe get in a couple of sessions a week. Um, and and then you compare that to professional cricket and you're training five days a week if you want to. So I think time on task helps you develop your skills. Um, but then it also brings other elements into it in that when you're professional, that's it can be quite consuming and I think now the girls are in a situation where you know they are on television a lot they're on the radio so they're a bit more accountable I think for um for what they're doing um because it is their job um and as anyone you have to perform if you don't perform then you you lose your job so from that point of view it can also be quite brutal um there were the Ashes wins in your career there was World Cup wins England player of the season is it easy to pick a, a particular highlight out? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think the one for me is the 2009 50 over World Cup. So that was in um, Australia. And the reason why that was so special, I think, is because we had a, a group of players who had been on a journey for four years. Um, so rewind back to 2005, we got knocked out of the World Cup. Um, we didn't even make the semi-finals. We were really young, really um, learning our way. And that four years was a, a massive um, journey to be a part of. Um, we were developing as cricketers and as players. And we were a really close-knit team as well. So I think any team sport, when you're that close with the people you're playing with, um, all these successes actually um are much better I, I think when you're um you're all sort of buying into that common goal which is a bit of a cliche but I think when you actually care about your teammates and you want them to do just as well as you do I think that's um something that's really special as well. Has the women's game progressed in the same way across the world when you meet up for World Cups do you notice that internationally the sport's grown? Yeah it has but I think there's still a way to go I think there's um sort of from the top Top four or five teams, so England, Australia, um, India, now South Africa, um, are getting more support. But I think there's still other nations out there who could do with more support to level the playing field because there's no question that other nations, you know, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, um, Ireland as well, there's no question that they've got the players who can perform on the world stage. But until they get the support, I think that's when, I guess when they get that, that's when the competition and, and the, um, the levels of competitiveness will, will be more vast. Um, and I think that, that will be a, a great sort of point for women's cricket to get to eventually. How did you um, manage the transition as a player to starting to, to coach as well at the same time as well? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, that was, I think I was quite lucky because during my playing career, I was a Chance to Shine coaching ambassador. So people will be aware of Chance to Shine um, helping develop cricket in state schools. So um, whilst I was sort of uh, in the mid phase of my career, I was coaching in schools, um, working with county age groups and sort of learning the trade that way, if you like. And then I think when I was, when I became retired, um, it was quite a nice transition for me to go into um, and it was something that I really enjoyed as well I think you know when you're um, when you're consumed by the game for, as from a player playing point of view you can appreciate actually coaches more when you're outside of it um, and just how much of a role they can play so um, yeah it's something that is, is really enjoyable. What have opportunities been like for, for female coaches in the game? Yeah, again, I think it's something um, that can always improve. I think certainly um, in county age group and in the England pathways and, and throughout, I think that's something that the ECB are working hard to to make sure that there's more opportunity for female coaches because I think there will be more and more women coming out of the game now who will probably go into the coaching route and I think they will have a huge amount of skills and expertise to offer. Um, so now I think is a really good time to to sort of get a good cohort of female coaches and, and give them as much opportunity as possible. Um, not just at that sort of international standard but at the grassroots level as well. I think that's where 
the whole role models in schools and clubs um, is just sort of priceless, really. You, you can't put an, a figure on that in terms of the impact that that has for young girls and, and also women as well. Now, now you've worked as well on, on improving opportunities for girls with, for one thing, the Cricket for Girls Academy. Where did, where did the idea for that come from? What did you feel that would bring, if you like? Um, yeah, it's sort of quite organic, really. I, when I retired, I just contacted some clubs and I just said, look, do you want me to come in and do some coaching for you? So, and they were like, yeah, OK. So um, I did that and then I just thought there's something in this, in young sort of female coaches going into schools and clubs um, and breaking down barriers for young girls because I've seen it myself when I go into a school um, and you're teaching a mixed class um, the boys run out they're, they're sprinting out they change they're ready to go and the girls sort of follow slowly behind them and when they see actually they've got a female coach there you suddenly see their demeanour change, their eyes are a bit wider, their shoulders go back a bit and they suddenly realise actually this is a sport for us as well and I've seen that happen countless times. So that's what I mean by sort of the whole female role model. I think that's something that's so important um, at any level and um, it's been great to see those young girls then go on and and carry on playing cricket. Yeah, and I suppose does that come from the the profile of the game as well, not just the people like yourself going into schools, but if if girls can see women's cricket on TV, in the papers, etc. Yeah, definitely. It's sort of that phrase, isn't it? If you can't see it, then you can't be it, um, which I think is a really good one. It's, you know, if young girls can see, you know, whether it's Heather Knight out there playing cricket for England, lifting a World Cup trophy um, or listening to them on the radio, um, it's it's all about making it as accessible and visible as possible um, and that's always getting better and better and um, we're seeing the results with it now you know from grassroots level at clubs there's so many more girls playing cricket through the all-stars program which is brilliant um, and then also with the softball women's festivals you're seeing women who haven't played sport for a number of years get back involved in into cricket and being active and um, yeah again I think the impact of of that link between seeing the, the pros do it to then you picking up a bat yourself is is really important i mean uh, cricket's probably one of the more equipment intensive sports that you can pick <laughs> up as a child so uh, i know you've worked with the the female cricket store as well how big an issue is it for women and girls to to be able to find the right equipment to be able to play the game if they want to yeah i think there's two i think there's two things when it comes to the equipment side there's one is the functionality of it so is it are the cricket bats light enough for them um you know are the wrist straps on the pads um the right size so that they're not sort of um being sort of tied round and having excess strap hanging on hanging off similar to the pads as well um and to the size of the cricket balls and then there's the um cricket is a sport for women and girls aspect of it and so if they can't find the right kit for themselves then they will think well this isn't a game for us you know clothing is another one that's what we're working on at the moment because if a young girl is is picking up a a pair of pads and it says the size label is boys or small boys or men's then automatically they think oh well we shouldn't have this equipment whereas well yes you you should and that's what we're sort of trying to address is is making sure that the equipment is welcoming and functional and suited for them um so yeah i mean since launching that that's been great and there's always more ways that we can be offering more things and better things um and and so yeah that that's obviously a good starting point to make sure that women and girls have a, a place to go to, to get their equipment. What was that experience like for you when you were starting out? Was it a case of hand-me-downs and, and various bits and bobs? <laughs> yeah, it was really. It was. Um, I was lucky because my dad knew what to get, so he was a cricketer himself, so he would just go to the shop and he'd get me my bat, whereas I think the challenge that young girls have now is the route to entry is is more different it's more diverse so it isn't because they've got a family member playing it's because they've played at school so suddenly when they come home from school and they say to their parents oh I need some cricket kit and their parents don't really know the game of cricket that's a challenge in itself so um, I think you know being able to sort of not educate but have materials which help parents know okay this is what we need to buy this is the size we need to buy um 
because as I say, it's not the, the same for everyone. The route that I had and a lot of the England girls had in that they had brothers and dads who knew exactly what to get them. So, um, yeah, I was quite lucky in that, in that regard. I didn't have to sort of worry about kit. And, uh, and in terms of the shape of the women's game now, I mean, having played in 50 over World Cup finals, how did you feel when you saw this year's at the MCG with all the, all the fans and all the sort of ceremony around it? Yeah, I mean, I, I was there and it was unbelievable. I was um, sort of got to the ground quite early um, and, you know, two or three hours before and there, were, there was this amazing buzz around the ground, just people so excited to get into the MCG. Um, and the, the really great thing was it wasn't, of course, it was sort of the young families, it was girls and boys, and it, but it was also groups of men sort of, if you can imagine they're on like a, a stag do or something but this is what they've chosen to to spend their time doing is to come and watch the women's world cup final and so um that in itself was brilliant just to see the different types of people going to watch the final um and i think just the way that it was invested in in terms of cricket australia the icc had put a huge amount of effort into making a, it a success um, but the fact that over well nearly ninety thousand people were there at that final um, was amazing, and um, obviously it was a fairy tale for Australia um, t- to win the final. But um, yeah, just such a, a fantastic occasion, and sort of gave me goosebumps just thinking back to when I made my debut at the Gabba. There was no one there, and then you're at the MCG, bigger than the Gabba, and it was practically full so it was yeah fantastic and it shows how far the women's game has come in in that period but what do you think the challenges still are what are the things that women's cricket needs to kind of overcome to, to carry on progressing yeah I think that's a really good question I think two things really the domestic level um for all the nations I think for the top for the top sort of eight to ten nations to compete they have to have a, a good structure underneath them um, I think England are in a really good place with that, as are Australia. Um, but I think it needs the rest of the nations to sort of invest at that grassroots and above level. Um, and then I think always just the, the media presence, I think giving the, the top nations a platform to showcase the game is really important. Um, and, yeah, to continue to engage with, with women and girls um, and, and have people championing it, I think, you know, it's all very well us as females champion in the women's game, but I think more powerful is when our male equivalent sort of get on our our bus, if you like, and, and really sort of um, fly the flag for us. I think that's just as probably more powerful than us doing it ourselves as well. So, um, yeah, but obviously really exciting times ahead.